Hello and welcome to the channel. I'll be reviewing the 165 amp hour Red Odeo LiPo 4 battery today. Originally I went with the power station for a power source for living in my vehicle, but since living in my vehicle I've really come to an understanding and appreciating power more. And I didn't need a better understanding to know that I did need more power. Uh, Red Odeo sent me this uh, battery for testing. This collaboration gave me the perfect opportunity to build my own solar system. Not only that, but further my knowledge on solar systems and electricity in general. I've always been nervous when it comes down to electricity. I've been shocked before. Luckily, these new batteries are smart batteries for the times that I'm not. This battery in particular has a 165 amp battery management system, which takes out a lot of the headaches and worries for me. Which again, I'm new to all this. That's why this is under entertainment, not education. Thing holding a giant bowl or a small one. Nice That's nice packaging on that one. Really clean. So yeah, that's actually not bad for weight. It's very manageable. I like the strap they got on them. 165 amp hours, and this is um, a 31 series, uh, group 31 sized battery. I had to throw this thing on my scale just because it was messing with me. I'm used to selling 31 group size batteries all the time at work, but those are lead acid and a lot heavier than these. I thought about using some of these batteries, but they're heavier, not as safe, and they don't carry the same kind of energy, but I can get them cheap. Those aren't smart batteries though. This is, and look at this thing. It would glisten in the moonlight. It's the cleanest battery I've ever laid my eyes on and really solid. I feel like I could stand on this thing, no problem. It's really nice. 2,112 watt hour. So that's quite a substantial amount more than my power station. So I will definitely utilize something like this. Needs to say this is a very expensive build and expensive video to make. I just ended up picking everything I thought I would need for a system. And I'd like to thank all those who helped. You probably make a little thing or something in there. But yeah, so. Between those, this was like $120 and then the wiring, like, I ended up getting zero gauge wire. Kind of want to prepare. Yeah, I kind of just figured might as well do it now. Oh yeah, and I ended up getting a battery box too. First of the business, this is a solar charger. It's at 30 amp. Should work. That was a cheap one. Probably shouldn't keep that on this, but should work for what I intend for, and then maybe get a better one later on. It does work for life though for a battery though. That's my main concern. I meant to do this backwards as far as the fuse, and then put it closer there, but it should still work. Negative, positive, positive. I'm just trying to get this thing to charge for now. I'm not worried about putting a power inverter or anything on it. I need to get it charged up first. And don't give me time to get an actual crimper because I don't have a good crimper. Negative, negative, heighten. I definitely want to get rid of these because this is that copper lead crap. I want to use it all copper. Just got to get a little more prepared. Thank you got everything. You're getting something. Of course, 
So good. Gotta switch over to life 04 battery. That's a good song. I've been using the app while reviewing and testing this battery. You can check on the percentage of the battery, the power input and output. It worked well for me and gave me real time information, which was good because you had to fully charge these batteries before using them, so I knew when it was ready. I'm back where I left off over there. So I got the solar charge controller. Okay, now I collected a couple uh, inverters over the years. This one I found. Uh, that one's a 400 watt, and then this one's also about the same. These two are modified sine wave inverters, and that's not very good for your electronics. What you want is a pure sine wave inverter, and this is by far the nicest inverter I've ever owned. I've never needed anything bigger than you know one of these to hook up to the battery real quick to use. So um, this one is with the pure sine wave, it's uh, good for sensitive electronics and such like that. All right, for time's sake, I'm gonna use their uh, battery cables they supply. I'm not sure if this is actually real copper, if that copper clad stuff. Um, I have my own cables that I'm gonna make. I just need uh, a way to crimp them. I wanna crimp them properly. So in the meantime, I'm gonna use this. Going. I actually remembered where it's at. Okay, I think we're all good. Working condition. And of course, we need to test the load. Okay, so there was a ground. I'll set that up later. Once I actually set it up permanently. This is just for demonstration. which is a little over how much this should be running. So I'm gonna cut that off. Okay, just for curiosity's sake. Okay, I need a new microwave because that thing is super inefficient. But that thing works really well. I'll have to try a smaller load on it. Right around. Decent threshold, running around 1000 watts. It's definitely nice having a battery with the Bluetooth app. That way you can have the readout on demand. I'm surprised this thing still works. Broken in half. So I know this one's 500 watts, so let's see around where it sits. It's crazy that this small heater draws the same amount of power as my air conditioner, which of course I had to test. I wouldn't know that without the readout, but this battery's been consistent and holding its amperage. The battery performed well, and I had a great experience with it. From one person to another, if you're in the market for this type of thing or need something like this, I definitely recommend it.